folks, we got a, a great one for you today. We're going to talk about the earnings reports to watch for the week of December 7th. We still got some bangers in here, right? Still some bangers, and we'll be talking about it. I've got three, uh-huh, three focus stocks this week. Kind of nice, okay? I'll go into all three of those in my opinions, but obviously just as we talk about this, um, we'll talk about my opinion on some of these ones coming up. So we'll start Monday before open. Just go right into it. With Jinko Solar, not the, not the jeans, not Jinko jeans. Uh, these are the uh, solar panels, baby. Woo. Uh, Astronova and DLH. After close, uh, we've got a Koopa. Uh, and one of my one of my focus stocks right here is Stitch Fix. And obviously, you may think, well, why is this a focus stock? Well, okay, I get it. It's a position I hold, so maybe that's why it's a focus stock. I get it. But I really think Stitch Fix, really, for the long term, mostly because this is an environment poised for success when you're talking about uh, the online clothing segment because those are the areas where you're seeing a lot of gain, right? Clothing's finally seeing some recovery from earlier this year, and those who are performing well online are the ones seeing growth in sales. So Stitch Fix being a quite a beneficiary of that, uh, being one of the safer ways to shop for clothing right now, they, they benefit quite a bit. So as far as what they're expected, analysts are expecting a negative 20 cents uh, EPS estimate that compares to a flat EPS of a year ago. Um, you know, it's it's not uh, not a beautiful number. Uh, Expected to be pretty far down as far as this EPS is concerned. Honestly, if I'm being if I'm being brutal with you, I think they're gonna miss in terms of an EPS standpoint. Just gonna be brutal with you. Um, for the full year, though, still expected to grow that EPS line, not be profitable, but grow that. And the next year after that, they are expected to be profitable, which is pretty dope. Um, and a revenue estimate of 481 million. Uh, now that they don't show it here, that compares to I believe is 444 million um, in this quarter last year. So you'll be seeing somewhere close to around an eight percent increase. I believe it's uh, eight and closer to uh, eight and a half increase. So definitely something to look forward to. Quality stuff there. Um, I think they. I mean, I hate to say it because they typically disappoint me. It's rude. It's rude to say that, but. I think they beat in terms of a, a revenue standpoint, not by much, but I think the sales will be close to a 9% gain um, year over year, so just keep an eye out for that. So back to the others. we got a banger after them in Toll Brothers. Really big beneficiary right now in terms of the market just due to the fact that these are, uh, well, first off, a, an incredible housing market. You need to mention that. Uh, and you also need to mention, well, uh, people are buying a lot. And... Toll Brothers houses are very high quality, right? These are top tier, top tier houses. Uh, and the people that buy these aren't affected by really a lack of money or financials due to any sort of recession type environment, loss of job. That's not the people that buy Toll Brothers houses. These are uh, very well off people. Um, so that's where Toll Brothers sees a benefit actually. Um, they're more of a benefit in the fact that they're not impacted as much you know uh that's that's where their benefit strikes so that's that's my opinion on toll brother still want to look out for smart sheet uh, health equity klx energy services um and rs education i mean that's cool uh china uh tuesday before open you've got uh autozone Nothing crazy to say with AutoZone, nor H&R Block. Don't have much to say. I mean, obviously, we're coming into tax season, you know, coming up here next quarter. So next quarter will be bigger for H&R Block. This quarter, don't necessarily know what you can really expect from them. Thor Industries, uh, can't tell. G3 Apparel Group, uh, Liquidity Services, and Brown Foreman. Now, after close, we got another one of my focus stocks oh baby oh baby it's gonna be chewy you already know it look at chewy right here look at them so inspirational man expected a negative 13 uh cent eps not little number uh compared to a negative 20 cents of a year prior so improvement on that aspect um from a revenue perspective that's really the main focus of this company right now uh, expected to grow revenue 40 percent to 1.72 billion now uh 
I think they beat in terms of a revenue standpoint on that. Um, I don't think it's going to be a massive, massive beat, but I do think they beat the uh, overall uh, analyst estimates there. So should be putting up some pretty darn good numbers, in my opinion. Uh, so that's true, yeah. Uh, good stuff. They benefit a lot, really, um, because not a lot of people still, there's a good portion of people that don't really necessarily want to go into stores. Pet adoption's doing quite well, I'll tell you that right now. A lot of people have come home with new pets, like no one's business. Um, people are getting lonely during the pandemic, okay? So they're getting pets. So Chewy.com, super convenient solution for that. Um, it's really the pet shopping of the future, so they're definitely leading the market in terms of that. After them, GameStop. I, I just feel like GameStop is not something that necessarily needs to exist anymore. Uh, and I don't want to be personal with it. I don't want to be rude. But um, we can look at their numbers and see what they do as far as like PS5 and uh, Xbox Series X are concerned. I don't know what to say with GameStop. It's just kind of a eh, not a company that I think is relevant. And I don't think it will be relevant here. Uh, within the next four years, I think this company is completely out of business. So. Not one I usually look at. Uh, MongoDB, uh, Guidewire, Freesia, Freesia, and AV. Now, before open on Wednesday, we have Campbell Soup. Again, super, super boring stock, but I think we've seen a, a resurgence, uh, I would say, in terms of pandemic buying. And I do think people are stocking up again, even on consumables. So, food uh, sees a benefit. Again, it's not going to be a massive benefit, but uh, especially because the majority of this quarter, they kind of saw a decrease from the most of the uh, hype and hysteria. This next quarter for them might be bigger than this one, but uh, this one's not going to be massive, massive. Uh, Unpi, Vera, Bradley, um, Lovesack, uh, Veru, uh, Designer Brands, and uh, Photronics. That's right. Uh, after close, we see Adobe. Um, not sure what to say about Adobe, frankly, um, because I think on a subscription standpoint, they've been doing pretty decently. Um, the company's done well in their recent earnings, so uh, you could see maybe a little bit of repeat. I think there's a lot still in terms of uh, home offices, uh, work from home that they seem to benefit on, in my opinion. I just don't know necessarily what the degree of that benefit is. Uh, and you see, obviously, personal uh, PC per purchases have been up, you know, 16 17% this year. Um, so keep an eye out for that, maybe. Uh, RH, Restoration Hardware. Uh, Genesis, to them. Grief. Encino. Uh, Met. Uh, and Oxford. That's right. Uh, Oxford Industries, baby. Thursday before open, we've got uh, Sienna. A uh, chip company I used to follow back in the day. I used to own this the stock quite a while back in the day. Um, <laughs> you know, I got out of the company for many reasons. I didn't think there was a huge potential upside, and really a lot of stocks have outperformed it over the last five years, uh, really the last four years, or the last three years, I guess is fair. It was there at the dawn of my portfolio, so let's give it three years' time frame. So. Um, when I kind of stop following, uh, but I do, it, they are right now in an industry that is in a, a very good standpoint, so I think you see benefit there. Um, so, yeah, that's about that. They spelled flower wrong right after this. I don't know why they spelled flower wrong. Fluor. Um, come on now. You can't just typo like that. <laughs> uh, after that, after close Thursday, we've got my last, that's right, the last of the focus stocks in Costco. Now, Costco is a really interesting company because the uh, really the ability of them to see uh, both subscription benefit, which uh, and retail. I mean, there's a subscription and retail. Subscription is the market of the the present right now. Subscriptions are all the rage. Um, and now uh, it's pretty interesting to see. Well, uh, they've got the retail aspect too, so pretty exciting. Right there for Costco. They're expected a $2.05 EPS standpoint. Um, compares to a $1.73 of a year prior. So good improvement there. Really good improvement. Now from a uh, revenue estimate, they're expected $42.4 uh, which I believe 
Um, it was representing close to, a, a, I believe it's a 7% gain only uh, over the last year's quarter. Uh, it's a 7 or 8% gain. It's nothing massive, massive. And I do think they beat on that aspect. I would personally expect that they see comp sales still uh, with e-commerce included um, closer to a 9 to 10% uh, growth in my opinion. Uh, I, I, I know for a fact that not so I'll just give you you know this is the insider information for the, the retail and wholesale industry right now because I think everyone wants a little bit of that insider info um, so this quarter for them most likely is going to uh, encompass um, August September and October so typically that'll be what that encompasses there uh, I will tell you, August, you saw decline into September, um, and September was the weakest month so far this year as far as retail sales have been concerned. Um, and you saw a resurgence come towards the later half of October. Um, so probably the second half of October saw back to March levels in terms of uh, retail sales. So you need to consider that. Um, but for the most part, there were probably a total of around, you know, two months that were on a, a decline period here. I still think that because it's Costco, I think they pulled a lot of people back in. Um, and I think Q4 is going to be probably the biggest quarter they've had, obviously, in the history of the company. I think it's going to be incredible what they put up Q4. But this quarter, um, I still think they put up close to a 9 to 10% comp. It's my, my opinion on the matter. Ah! Okay, um, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, finish this here with a solid um, little bit of Lululemon. Uh, mm, don't know. <laughs> uh, clothing not doing too well. Broadcom, uh, performing very well actually lately. Broadcom, they do a good job even in pandemic, okay? Oracle, good company as well. Vail Resorts, uh, Quanex, J. Jill. Pan, panhandle baby, panhandle baby, we love the panhandle, and finishing up uh, Friday with Construction Partners Incorporated, man, of course it's Construction Partners Incorporated, we all know who they are, I don't know who they are, I'm sorry, but that's going to be your companies to look at for this freaking week, and I hope you enjoyed it and you're ready for a schmackin' week, oh baby, let's get some more green out there boys. And girls.